environment and its components offer immense goods and services to people therefore there is a need to use it sustainably without jeopardizing the benefits that are due to the future generations CSOs and youth can play a significant role in environmental policy making its governance and management keeping this in mind VYK and Oyska International have jointly decided to deliberate on this subject for better clarity of roles and muster energies for larger conservation gains welcome one and all uh, to the webinar on role of CSOs and youth in environmental protection and conservation uh, which is being organized by Vishwa Yuva Kendra and Oyska International South India main focus we want to keep it is towards the youth and the ngos on what role they can play in environmental protection because when we say of environmental protection it is a it is a short term goal and when we are talking about conservation it is a long term goal and a medium goal so we have to we have to keep that in mind how our short term goals can help us achieve our long term goal which is uh, and uh, like an earth which is clean uh, which is safe which can sustain life for many more many uh, many more years to come i think we cannot just think about ourselves we need to think about our future generations the animals the birds as most of the scientists and environmentalists say that some of the major causes of the environmental degradations are modern urbanization industrialization overpopulation growth deforestation etc means these are the main causes in this first formal session causes of environmental degradation actions and expectations for conservation gains if you take today's paper everywhere people talk about the environmental issues that we have it is climate change it is global warming improper waste disposal and uh, people talk about uh, pollution urban sprawls ozone layer depletion acid rains deforestation loss of bio biodiversity um, determin determination of the ecological systems the way nuclear waste the plastic waste the household waste industrial waste and things like this this is what i have listed and this could be much more so you take any newspapers today th these are the things that are really confronting us day uh, every day day in and day out the causes of environmental degradation friends are anthropogenic anthropogenic definitely is because of uh, the so called uh, anthropogenic activities anthropocentric activities which are urbanization industrialization overpopulation poverty deforestation and then the you know, so wrong use of technology pesticides wildfires etc while the natural factors are um, the so called um, you know tsunamis landslides earthquakes etc and both these are competing today uh, to uh, and as a result of which environmental degradation is a tremendous thing that we are facing and therefore the remedies that we are looking for is sustainable forest management a little technical we are trying to see what is sustainability today there are two problems conservation versus um the, what is called as uh, conservation versus development this fight is going on the buzzword now is uh, sustainable management how do we really sustain it in such a way so that we really don't take the natural capital we completely defy the natural capital and spoil it then that sort of a management which looks into posterity gandhi ji's words of roughness uh, what what is called as enoughness uh, gandhi ji often said that we we have enough for our need but not for our greed that we, that is what is precisely sustainable management stakeholder participation that is why this workshop today to see that all of you are part of it we have management plans to plan our to manage our ecosystems reducing emissions from deforestation degradation these are new things that we are looking at where ways to see how deforestation and degradation can be contained and to see the carbon stock in the forest is built up and increase in the area and the management practice we need protected areas which are called sanctuaries and national parks we need to really have more of them possible valuation of the forest we really do not know what is it the forest can give you in terms of money value we can always talk about other things but forest also need to be valued in terms of its contribution to air water and other resources forests do influence the environment see if you want a really good environment if we already have 24% of a land area under forest and we are aiming at 33% of a land area to be brought under forest and this is possible if all of us collectively start working just not within the forest alone but outside the forest in farmlands and community lands and school lands in wastelands everywhere we should look for opportunities 
to plant them with trees and cover them with trees. And tropical forests cover 7% of the area, they hold 50% of the biodiversity. The air, we have seen wherever there are good forests, urban forests, small collections of trees, groves, the sacred groves, then the temperature there is definitely two to three degrees lesser. Sustainable development goal 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. These are fantastic goals. If these goals are achieved by 2030, a lot of the problems which I said can be taken care of. Connect yourself with soils, trees, animals, landscapes, energy systems, water on which life depends. Like earthworms, we too are organisms of the soil. We too need grounding. I have made it um, very, very uh, simple so that everybody really uh, takes home the message. I, my idea was to connect this thought of ecology, uh, environment, conservation, so that students do get connected to it wherever, whichever part of the country you are, in wherever positions you go, you need to have this umbilical connection with nature. We are uh, speaking about conservation. We are talking about forest. We are talking of ecology. We are talking of protecting our environment. And what are the issues that a uh, majority of our youth uh, encounters? Uh, we have uh, now a very large population of youth in India. And actually, India, we say it's a demographic dividend. But most of these uh, youth are staying in the cities. And when they stay in the cities, I have listed a few common issues that they encounter. They encounter the issue of water conservation, plastic, saying no to plastics, uh, reducing their uh, buying uh, uh, capacity and reducing the waste and looking at various uh, modes of travel which are convenient to them, which are convenient to their pocket and also to the environment. Why did I write all this here? The purpose of writing here is that we are talking about all these issues because youth encounter these issues. But what is the connection with ecology and environment? Here is where our interdisciplinary approach will make a lot of uh, change in the attitude of the youth. So we're talking of water conservation. We cannot bring each child to a river basin. And conversely, we cannot uh, bring in water, natural water systems into the city. But we can definitely train a child, train a student, train a youth of connecting with where does the water that you use come from. So when you open a tap, you get water. But that water is from uh, originally a uh, original source of water. So when we take them down the journey, we take them along the journey of any resource that they come across in a city, that is when they will start thinking of conservation, they will start thinking of ecology, they will uh, learn the connections and connectivity that uh, nature has with their uh, life. For youth, it is very important that they have to be educated, but education should lead to some leadership roles. These leadership roles are very well put up into the green clubs that are formed, the eco clubs, nature clubs, where we have monitors, we have people, we have, we have students who monitor students. Because this peer-to-peer -peer learning will definitely make an impact. Youth doesn't want us to talk to them. They would rather listen to a friend. So we need to create very clear leadership role amongst youth. We have to educate them. We have to create uh, courses, opportunities, wherein they understand the sustainable practices and what is happening in the conservation field. Three main categories, which is the political, social, and environmental. Environmental is something that they are directly connected with they can address it by changing their immediate lifestyle. So any act that they do now will automatically connect them to an environmental dimension of ethics. When they are looking at a social dimension, they are looking at a society. So for them to be involved with a so social dimension of ethics is through the society that they live in. Here, this is actually a process of I, we, and us. So I is environment, V is social, and political, of course, is us. That is more or less influencing the policies. 
so we can it is a, a bottom up approach wherein we make an immediate change in our own uh, activity which will ultimately automatically lead to a major change in the political dimension uh, he has very rightly said that india needs to be more self generating and self sustaining and creating opportunities by giving a more focus on employment generation innovation and digitization he has captured the entire canvas so if we keep these three main words employment generation innovation and digitization i see hope only in the youth of today because any idea any activity that is channelized in these three major areas automatically looks at the youth and a very important way of doing it which he has said in earlier is to give more importance to being local so all our initiatives by all the csos and all is at a local level which needs to be emphasized and brought forward at a national and global platform all over the world there is a tendency for the conservation of wetlands after the tsunami of 2004 so here you can see the children and the youth are involved in the protection activities uh, it is under the uh, leadership of oiska international so here again in different countries you will find the youth is actually involved in mangrove afforestation program a mangroves are actually a taxonomically diverse species of plants which are mentioned under the resolution 8 to 32 of ramsar convention and uh, where you will find the different uh, special characteristics like viviparous germination that is a reproductive adaptation and uh, formation of pneumatophores that is a structural adaptation for breathing purpose breathing roots and also the salt excretion through the leaves so this is a particular special type of plants we cannot see such a type of plants elsewhere only in the salt wetlands salty wetlands what is the importance of mangroves it is used for the nutrient supply to all the organisms directly or indirectly most of our organisms are depending on this mangrove plants it is a food for many species of species crustaceans and many which are living in the wetland region it is a fodder for the cattle the leaves the leaves of sonaricea is considered to be a very good fodder for cattle the timbers are available and the fuel wood is available it is the nesting and breeding ground for the different types of birds and uh, nursery ground for uh, fishes and uh, also small crustaceans next is the medicine there are different types of medicines that are available in a mangrove area for example exicaria agallocha is a plant from which we get uh, uh the exudates uh, or the that is uh, uh known as a sap the white sap that sap is actually used for the treatment of leprosy and other skin diseases there is one another mangrove plant namely uh, uh is cantaria cande the leaf of which is used for diabetes and uh, brugira cylindrica the leaves and fruits are used for the treatment of heart diseases so uh, brugira cylindrica is the other plant then leaves and viviparous seeds for diabetes wood for furniture and boat making this is candelia candel the candelia candel actually is the is used as a cattle fodder and it is the leaves are used for uh, medicine for diabetes another one is lumicera then acanthus sylvifolius so why mangroves are important mangroves are important because of many reasons this is the only unique ecosystem the living and non living organisms 
that to make this ecosystem more important. It is the system of relationship between these all organisms and the living and non-living things together. So they are essential uh, in the first, uh, that is the food chain, for the food chain, they are essential. So there are, in the wildlife of banks, there are different types of fishes, crustaceans, mollusks, etc. are found. And there are different types of birds, the crabs, etc. Different types of crabs are there. And many other wildlife you will see, uh, find is uh, uh, that is um, uh, mangrove, bucky, periwinkle, crocodile sometimes. So this is a very good habitat for such a type of all different type of organisms like insects, frogs, bats, snakes, and other creatures. Every, everyone can come to the mangrove area and live. About biodiversity like tens of waste generated per day in India for a population of 130 crores. And per capita waste generation is between 200 to 500 grams in India. We should be one way happy because in developed countries, the per capita generation is 10 times more or 2.5 kg per capita because of our lifestyle and we reuse and recycle to some extent like from the uh, paper and other things, we could be able to restrict our per capita waste generation in spite of our, so much of population. But source segregation, which is not happening, which is a big threat for the waste management. Out of these 550 lakh tons, 330 lakh tons are biodegradable waste. See, as of now, there are only 93 compost plants in India. Capacity is uh, installed capacity 23.5 lakh tons, whereas the operating capacity is only 2.8 lakh tons only, which is less than 1% of the total waste generated. So we are still in the very initial stage of the solid waste management. There are some plants, biomethanization plant and waste energy plant. This only a, they are doing it at an experimental stage, not in the big way they are producing power and all. And uh, there are sanitary landfills, 13 numbers in India. Again, the sanitary which generates CO2 emissions are about 7,100 tons per day, which is an alarming quantity. See, dump on land and fire, that is happening in all over India. High gaseous pollutants, which are again responsible for the poor visibility, bad odor, smoke, etc. Uh, we will have to go forward to find solutions for this. This is some, something uh, very extreme cause. Uh, fortunately, now to Swaraj Bharat, about 62,000 crores has been earmarked for the um, sanitation and uh, respective areas. We will see what will happen in the coming years. Say, plastics is a major problem. And uh, some action that can be downcycled, but you cannot compromise on plastics. We need plastics because it is cheaper and waterproof. We cannot get away from the plastics because plastic has done a lot of uh, revolution in India. We should accept because it is something a major part in the water supply. See, the water supply extended to the old rural areas only because of the PVC pipes. If the PVC pipes or asbestos pipe was not there, we would, have not been, we would have not been able to provide the water supply to the rural community. It is something a major revolution in water supply in automobiles where the weight of the automobile has been brought down, thereby fuel consumption has been considerably reduced. Again, in the area of electrical, electronic, fabric, and packaging, say home was in rural areas, a population of less than 10,000, requirement one, a pit of uh, one meter by one meter by two meter depth, backyard. You dispose all food waste, garden waste, to some extent the biomedical waste also, to begin with. Eh? The excavator soil can be used for daily cover. The pit will serve two to three years for a family. See, there are two options. 
I have just suggested. The option one is the independent common composting or biomethanation for the uh, biodiesel waste and the regional waste to energy plant for dry waste. Option two is the waste to energy plant with mixed waste. I understand this uh, webinar was very informative and fruitful one. Many youth from different parts of India actively participated. We are very much thankful to Vishayur Kendra for the arrangements of this webinar. Especially our special thanks to Chief Controller and very dynamic Mr. Uday Shankar Singh Ji and program of Mr. Rajat Thomas, Dr. Lille, Mr. Ajit Kumar Rai and all BYK team. I'm also glad to extend our gratitude to Dr. Krishna Kumar, uh, Mr. Ganeshan, Dr. Khalil Chawa and all participants. So I think this was a very memorable webinar for us. Once again, thank you all. Thanks for watching. For more updates, please subscribe to our official YouTube channel and follow us here.